My name is Oren, I'm the CEO and co-founder of AppFlyer. I'm uh, Reshef, the CTO and the co-founder over here at AppFlyer. My name is Lisa, I'm VP of People Operations. I'm leading HR, learning and development and operations worldwide. So it all started with Oren and Reshef being the best friends in the high school. Afterwards we studied in university, in the Technion as well, worked in Intel together, and then traveled to South America, so we are friends for a long, long time. In 2010, I was uh, in, the, in the East Coast working for a small uh, VC company, and I did some research around uh, marketing and marketing technology, and I saw this wild west of companies that you don't really know who works for who and which interests are they representing. Um, and I also noticed a lot of companies building their apps without any tools or technology to measure uh, where the users are coming from. And I thought that this must be solved. They met again in 2011 uh, to start AppSlayer. And they've been following this dream, moving through different startup accelerators to make this happen. Mobile space was pretty new back then. Uh, well, we started working together in 2011. Mobile, the way that we know it uh, currently with smartphones, started in uh, 2007 with the release of the first iPhone. When I was in the US, I had my first iPhone, and the first 48 hours, I, I was sure that this device is going to change everything. And so it was pretty clear that uh, this is the, the area to be in. Back then, I thought that it makes no sense that companies investing so much money and effort um, in, in this without any ability to measure anything. And this is what basically took me back to Israel to start the company together with Reshev. It wasn't a big idea at the beginning. We thought that companies need to have the technology to measure where the users are coming from. The user acquisition cost and the return of investment and the lifetime value. They have to have it in order to have business, to stay in business, but not only to stay in business, just to make sure that we as consumers, as people that use smartphones, that we see something that is relevant for us and not just random things on, on this small screen device. And attribution is, the, is, is a critical component uh, to make everything more efficient and improve this user experience for us as consumers as well. So when Orn and Resha started working on the AppSlayer uh, idea, I was the one that was familiar with the advertising industry. So from the early days of the company, I served as a company advisor, finding uh, new clients and getting sales. In order to write the first line of code, and this is what I did in the beginning, you got to have a name for the company. Actually, that was my brother idea. Uh, we had a lot of options, I don't even remember uh, what exactly, but uh, at some point in time I said, you know, I just want to start working. So the next name that comes up, I'm going to agree and uh, we'll just uh, go with that. And uh, the first name that came up afterwards was uh, Apps Flyer. making our clients extremely happy with the, uh, with, with the product and with the people and what we call the AppSlayer experience. If the experience is great, they're gonna stay. And this is the top priority for us as a company. I believe that this is something that uh, also got us to the point uh, where we are. We always knew to do the trade-off between uh, investing in the technology, the purity of the product, and taking a shortcuts in order to make the customer satisfied. And uh, I believe that uh, up until now we did uh, the right uh, job. We keep our clients in mind for every decision we make. And by clients, I mean internal and external clients. Myself, uh, serving as a people operations for 500 uh, employees today, my clients are internal clients, are company employees. And I believe that for me to succeed in my role, I need to keep uh, our company employees in every decision I make. If we want to be customer obsessed, we need to be obsessed with our people. Because the people are taking care of our clients, not the company. The innovation. And I know that innovation is pretty used word, but this is something that got us to where we are. 
since we had to deal with such a scale that is growing up uh, all the time. I think that core of AFSA and what we really bring uh, inside of us uh, through the years is family spirit. The obvious answer would be the product, right? So we are producing and building a product that is mission critical to our clients. It's critical for their success. They use it every day. They use it uh, the first thing that they use in the morning and the last thing that they check before they go to bed. From early days uh, when we started the company and we were just five, 10, 30 people, we always paid attention to include families in company events and bring uh, families together because it's not only uh, employees that work in the company, it's their families, spouses, kids, parents. They are all part of big upstair family. But I think that the most important thing that we're building is the company. And what is building a company? This is something that I ask myself. It's about culture. Company culture is evolving. I don't think that culture is something that is static. It's evolving with the company. It's scaling over the times. It's a accountability. People are responsible and they know what is required from them. We need to build a culture that will allow us uh, to win this market in the long term. Because products and features come and go. Now the question is what will allow us uh, to build the product that will have a significant impact on the market in the future, five, ten years from today? The answer is the culture. For me, all in means using my full potential in my personal and professional life. When you're making a decision to work for a company, you're making an all in move. Now the question is, are you realizing it? Do you understand that it's an all-in move? And are you actually acting like that? And starting this company, uh, this is what I've been doing. And then I saw other people doing the same thing and develop themselves in ways that was surprising to them and was surprising to me. And, and I asked myself, what was this element there that enabled all that uh, with me and other people? And I said, uh, yeah, that's, that's the all in. That, this is the thing that you're not, you're not distracted with other things. This is what you do and you do the maximum you can and the best you can and, you, and this is how you develop yourself to the max. And what company uh, brings back is bringing you uh, an opportunity to be successful and to fulfill your potential. We never imagined it will reach this level. At the beginning, you're in a survival mode. You, you don't know if you're going to survive the next half year, the next year, or the next two years. When we started, we were just three people working in a, a small apartment in Mandarin building. We didn't imagine that we will, we will be 500 employees in seven years. For me, I just wanted to write code and uh, create some kind of a product I can say now that I didn't even have a plan of uh, where we are uh, going to or uh, yeah, didn't give it uh, too much thought back then. So you're looking for the next uh, deal or the next round because if not, you're going to go out of money. So it's a survival mode. So I didn't really think about long term at the beginning. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I truly believe that when you uh, put a goal for yourself, and uh, you know how you're going to achieve that, you're going to do that. Now, it's a complete different story. Now, not only that, we're thinking long term, we are sitting on a much higher mountain and we can see further what we can take this company. When we started the company, we knew it's going to be an international company. A business of mobile attribution couldn't grow just in Israel. You need to look outside. You need to plan your international strategy. We have 15 offices. I still remember the day that we decided uh, to have another office besides the office here. It was really scary at the beginning. But we invested a lot in this. So first of all, we knew that this is going to be challenging. Uh, and I think that this is why in very early days we invested heavily in making sure that everybody feel the same company. But 
it's not going to be the same. Again, if you're going to go into our office in Beijing, going to be go into our office in, in anywhere else, it's going to be different. Uh, but again, the core values uh, are going to be the same. One of the first projects I started in the company in 2013 was Officer Academy, which is basically an onboarding for new employees. And part of this project was to bring all international employees to Israel office to meet their colleagues, work on shared projects, and get the knowledge they need uh, to succeed in their roles. This is some sort of a baseline in the education, knowing the company, and also connecting with other people in uh, other offices around the world, because the office, for example, in uh, China might be disconnected in uh, his day-to-day -day activities from the office in uh, Buenos Aires. We have uh, the GIP, which is the Global Employee Exchange, that we allow uh, people to work from different offices to get to know different cultures. And when they meet in the academy, people from here and from there, it uh, creates uh, the connection and we are one company in the, the end of the day. I want to say to all new Apps Rocketeers that just joined that we are just 1% done. And there's so much room to make an impact, to get involved, to make a change, that when you act as a company founder and you keep in mind a company interest, it's very easy to make decision and to succeed. Whatever the position is, try to be the best in what you do. Um, and, 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 and as a company, we want to support you to do that. And I think that the best advice that I can give you, give you is uh, be all in. There is something that I like to call the snowball. And by snowball, I mean that uh, if you want to get something uh, rolling and get to action, you need to start pushing it. You need to just take the first step and uh, then continue to move on. Otherwise, you'll never get to do what you want to do. We want you here to try to make a change and not accept things as it is. We want to listen, we want to hear, we want to improve, and we want to put everything on the table, but we also need to make decisions, priorities decisions, about what's right for the company. So I encourage everybody to think, first of all, what's right for the company, then what's right for your department, your team, and then personally. This will maximize your benefit. The vision is global domination, and it means that we need to reach the maximum market share in all uh, markets that we operate. Marketing and marketing technology and advertising is going through a tremendous change, and I believe in the next five to ten years it's going to go through even more rapid change. And we, we think that we can build something that is very meaningful. Uh, to the market. We need to provide more products that will make our customers' lives uh, easier. This is what we try to do up until now and this is what we are uh, going to do. This is uh, going to be our uh, guideline. Now the question is how is gonna, it's going to look like in five or ten years from now? I don't know. But what I do know is that if we build the right culture, if we build the right company, we'll be able to do that. What role did you play in the early days of the company? <laughs> Blackout. <laughs> Hi, I'm Reshef. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> what do you think is Absolute number one value? <laughs> I think that the, the code. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where's there's. <laughs> where there's a will? There's a way. There's a way. Where's there's a way? <laughs> where's there's a way? <laughs> where there's a will? <laughs> oh. What piece of advice would you want to give to new apps flyer rocketeers? I 
I like my coffee with one sugar, otherwise I get mad. So when they bring it to me, 